continue on to today. Again, there's nothing new under the sun. Look at this one supposed astronaut. You can see right through him here at, at the very end. He becomes transparent. I mean, this is just a sick joke that they're playing. I mean, this is obviously just the so-called elite, those behind the scenes, just putting little Easter eggs in here, you know, mocking those that believe in the International Space Station. Scientists on the moon, click on this picture right here. Supposedly the same mission, same guys that took the picture of the most famous picture of our Earth. I'm going to do save image as, and let's see, Apollo moon, let's call it Apollo moon 17. And I'm going to open that in Photoshop. And it, 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 do you guys still see it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have to do a different screen share because it's on my other screen. Uh, okay, just a second here. Hang on. Um, I got two monitors, that's why. Okay, can you see? Oh, that's the same thing. Don't. Hang on, sorry. <laughs> Technical difficulties here. Here we go. Okay. All right, do you see Photoshop? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And if those of you think this technical difficulty was planned and think I'm scamming you, go do it for yourself. Because <laughs> you're going to find the exact same thing. I got nothing to hide here. This is live on the air, okay? I'm going to zoom in on the Earth in Photoshop. Can you see the Earth? Yep. Okay, I'm going to go to Image, Adjust, Levels, and I'm going to bring the levels over here. And I'm going to bring the levels up. Uh-oh, what is that? Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. Why is there a square box around the Earth allegedly taken from the scientists on the moon in Apollo 17? And people wonder why I don't trust NASA. That's why I don't trust NASA. I mean, they're always out there saying, you know, Rob, you, everybody's trying to show you stuff from space, and you, won't, you keep rejecting it. This is why I reject it. These guys are liars, you know? Yeah, and that's the same. That's the same technique too that uh, people will use to debunk UFO, you know, pictures and stuff. So it's a legitimate, you know, way to debunk things. That that's that's really interesting. It is, man. I, I mean, you, anybody who has Photoshop can just go to the NASA website, download the photo, do exactly what I did, see for yourself. Now, I think they've gotten better at some of them, um, where some the masking that they're using is is um, is not as obvious or or even not there at all. Um, but this one clearly was a pasted something on a backdrop. But yet we're told that this is NASA on the moon. I'm sorry, I don't buy it. Um, and then when you look at all the other, so that calls in question the most famous picture, because it's the same people, Apollo 17, that took the most famous picture. Then you got other pictures like this, the blue marble, right, that, are, that come out. Okay, well, um, there's a big problem with the blue marble. And... I'm going to zoom in here and show you what the problem is. These are all composite images where they are really not very good at Photoshop because they're using the Photoshop clone tool to replicate clouds. This cloud is a copy of this cloud. See the formations? They're identical. Identical formations, side by side. Wow. Right? These right here, side by side, side by side. See, see this kind of W-looking shape right here, replicated right here. This cloud is exactly the same as that cloud. Um, you know, same clouds right there. And same thing on the other side of the world. They got the same thing going on. They, they got careless here. Look, one, two, three, four, five of the same formations replicated right there. These two replicated. Same exact formations right here. Um, this right here is, is clone of that right there. I mean, really? So, you're telling me that we could take pictures of Jupiter and Saturn, huge, massive planets, and now we're out going to Pluto, but we don't have one legitimate picture of the Earth from space that's not a composite? Really? You know, this is where, okay, why, Rob, why are you looking into us? This is why. <laughs> um, because we're believing a bunch of Luciferian Nazis. Uh, and we're taking that over scripture. Now, here's another one for you. I put the other s uh, screen on. Um, can you see this right here? The photo journal? Yeah. Okay. 
this is Jet Propulsion Laboratory, NASA, California Institute of Technology, right? They have this video right here. For some reason, every time I click on it on this particular computer, I'm not able to open it, but I embedded it on my blog. The exact same video is embedded in my blog uh, off of uh, YouTube. Somebody had taken it and put, made a YouTube out of it. Um, yeah, oh, here are other blue marbles, okay, allegedly done by NASA. And if you don't believe me, here's the space.com website where I got the picture. Here's the nasa.gov website where I got this picture. Okay, they can't even get the scale right. Look how big the United States is in this one versus this one. Colors all off. I mean, so far all of these are crap. Um, here's that picture, uh, that same video, okay, from Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Now, this is allegedly from the space uh, uh, probe Galileo at 6.10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on December 11th, 1990, when the spacecraft was about 1.3 million miles from the planet. Okay, first of all, you got a tiny probe 1.3 million miles away from the Earth, supposedly, that is keeping a perfectly steady shot of a spinning ball that's supposedly also moving at 67,000 miles around the sun in orbit. And yet it maintains a perfect synchronous um, shot of the Earth. But this is what really got me. Not a single cloud is changing in any way. This is 25-hour time-lapse video. Supposedly 25 hours of the Earth rotating. Not a single cloud is, is changing, morphing, moving, dissipating, arriving, nothing. Wow. wow. That's what I said. This is a load of crap. And you got a lot of the same cloud features, too. You start noticing in a lot of pictures, they're using a cloud map on, on various software to generate these things. Okay, I could stand outside today, point my camera in the sky for 25 hours, and you're going to see all kinds of cloud formation changes. 25 hours, no clouds are moving? I'm sorry, I don't buy it. friends, Eric Bowser here. For those of you who want to live forever and want to get on the path or the road to eternal life, just repeat this humble prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I admit that I am a sinner and I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus is the Christ.
the son of the living God. He died on the cross for my sins. He arose three days later. He sits at the right hand of the Father. I ask him to forgive my sins. Come into my heart. Save me in a day of trouble. Keep me holy and guide me with every step. In Jesus Christ's holy name, amen. Now that's just the first step. You got to continue on. You just made a declaration before all of heaven and Satan's seen that too. So you're going to be in for a fight. He's going to try everything in his power to get you off that path. So you're going to have to learn how to fight. You're going to have to learn how to do spiritual warfare. God provided you with an excellent tool called the Bible. First thing you're going to need to do is get the real Bible. And the real Bible is called Authorized King James Version. Make sure you get that Bible. And an excellent book that you can start off reading in is a book of Proverbs and a book of Psalms. Because those are very relevant books to what be going on in everyday life. And it's a lot of wisdom in those books. I really love those books. Also, you can read the Gospels. The Gospels of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came down in the flesh to show us that it can be done. And he showed us how to do it. Those are some very good examples. Although we'll never be perfect like Christ but we are to our very best to be Christ like and all our weaknesses and all our flaws we call on the name of the Lord he can help us and he can help us overcome our temptations because we all will be tempted every one of us will be tempted but during the temptation that's when you call on the Lord you call on him right then and there when you're getting tempted because if you don't chances are the devil knows what you like and, he, and you're going to give in to it but, you know, you're going to fall, but every time you fall, just pick yourself back up because God mercy is there. He, God forgives, you know, all condemnation and all that. That's always coming in from the devil. But God is always ready to forgive you. But just don't play him and don't walk on his sacrifice, you know. Don't just keep thinking you got a license to do sins over and over and over because you probably could wear out your welcome. Just always ask God to help you when you're getting tempted, you know. That's what he's there for, and you know. And on that note, have a blessed life, and hope to see you in heaven. Stay on that path. God bless you.